Hey guys, welcome to another great tutorial about Bootstrap 4. Today we're going to talk about migrating from Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 4. We'll start by changes made on the files and the different ways on how you can install Bootstrap 4. We'll then talk about the minor changes on components, classes, such as tooltips, tables, carousels, thumbnails and forms, as well as some changes to the responsive design classes. Finally, we'll take a look on how we can manually migrate our Migrate Bootstrap team, which is in version 3 of Bootstrap Framework, and convert it to Bootstrap 4. Before we begin, let's talk first about the global changes made in Bootstrap 4, and these are the following. Bootstrap 4 switched from less to SAS for the source CSS files. It also switched from pixels to RAMs as the primary CSS unit. Media curves are now in AMS instead of pixels. And then finally, global font size increased from 14 pixels to 16 pixels. Let's check out the Bootstrap 4 file hierarchy and compare it with the Bootstrap 3 file hierarchy. If you're going to download the latest version of Bootstrap on this link and unzip the source files, you will notice that the Bootstrap version 4.0.-alpha the source less was replaced with SAS files due to its migration from less to SAS via libsas. And the normalized that CSS file was changed to reboot.css as the primary base CSS. Since Bootstrap 4 doesn't support Glyphicons anymore, the font folders also was omitted. Otherwise, the rest files remains the same. <music> Bootstrap 4 offers a variety of options to install. At the time of this video, Bootstrap 4 Alpha just came out, so not all package managers have the version for Alpha published yet, but it will come out very soon. You can choose any of the following methods. First one is source files. Use Bootstrap by downloading the complete package source, which includes SAS, JavaScript, and documentation files. This is actually done manually. Bootstrap CDN. You can use the links provided for free by the folks of Mac CDN. You just need to copy the links inside the link tag into your head section before all other style sheets to load the CSS. Package managers. Use package managers such as Bower, NPM, Meteor, and Composer to install Bootstrap. Finally, you can use custom builds. If you only need only a part of Bootstrap CSS or, or JS, you can use one of the custom builds available, here as follows. Reboot. This includes variables and mixins. Normalize and reboot. No JavaScript included. Grid. It includes variables, mixins, and our grid systems. No JavaScript included as well. Flexbox. All of Bootstrap with Flexbox enable and lower browser support. If you want to learn more about the installation process, you can check this page here. Bootstrap 4 classes use M snap pixels, and they've added one new tire for extra large screens. Check out the classes along with their screen sizes. If you are using the SAS CSS source versions of Bootstrap 4, you can control the grid sizes by changing the following variables. Dollar sign grid dash columns, which is the number of grids horizontally. The 12 is the default. Dollar sign grid dash gather dash width, the total padding around each grid. 30 pixels is, 30 pixels is the default. Dollar sign grid dash float dash breakpoint. The minimum size, the navbar becomes uncollapsed. Dollar sign screen dash sm dash mean is the default. Dollar sign grid dash float dash breakpoint dash max, the maximum size where the navbar begins collapsing. The default will be the size of the dollar sign grid dash float dash breakpoint minus one. <music> Now let's check out some of the changes made from the components classes. For block code, styling has moved to class not on the HTML tag anymore. For pager, 
previous button class was changed to pager-prev class while the next class was changed to pager-next class for the carousel item it was changed to carousel-item class now for the navbar we use the nav class and nav item class instead of selectors let's go over on some of this by trying to convert our migrate bootstrap version 3 team to bootstrap version 14 if you are like me when i see a new version of a framework i often use the first thing i want to do is to install the updated version of that framework with bootstrap 4 version you'll definitely see some issues when you do this as there's a as there are some changes made. In this part of this tutorial, we'll take a look at the dummy bootstrap 3 team which is the migrate bootstrap team and how to upgrade its classes to bootstrap 4. Let's take a look at what on its page. As you can see, we have a nice responsive navigation here. Some icons from Font Awesome, the tooltips from bootstrap version 3, and if you scroll down, you'll see a condensed table a carousel that works really well, thumbnails, and an inline form on the footer. The first thing we need to do first is to replace our bootstrap.mean.css and bootstrap.mean.js to the latest version. For this tutorial, I'm going to do it manually using the source files. You can download the bootstrap 4 alpha on this link. So I will be copying the new version of bootstrap CSS and JS files and replace the older version here. Just a quick tip, make sure you have an extra copy of your theme before migrating to the newest version of Bootstrap. If you know how to use Git, it is really recommended as it will really help you a lot because Git will handle all of the version control of your files but for this lesson, I'm going to show it to you manually. Now let's take a look of what happened to our migrate theme. As you can see, it messed up our navigation, tooltips doesn't work anymore, tables has a bit issues, carousel was also messed up, thumbnail doesn't work anymore, and there are some issues that is worth taking note on our form here. As you can see here, our migrate team has a nasty navigation bar. This is because Bootstrap 4 uses a different approach now for its navigation system. This includes some classes omitted. Let's take a look at how the navigation works on Bootstrap 3. As you can see here, it used the navbar class with its default styling and navbar fix top class to place it in a fixed position to the top upon scrolling. In Bootstrap 3, we use the data-toggle and data-target attributes for our responsive navigation and set up some span classes for our icons. Then we use an unordered list for our links. However, in Bootstrap 4, it has a bit changed but a lot cleaner in my opinion. Instead of using a bunch of classes, we just need to put a few ones. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a class that needs to be supplied on each list item via nav-item and nav-link for each anchor tags. For its responsive feature, you can use the navbar-toggler class along with bootstraps navbar-toggleable- and the size of the classes to create a responsive navbar that collapses at a given viewport width. For example, you could use navbar-toggleable-sm to turn the navbar into a toggleable navbar on small viewports. Let's try that now. I will be pasting my codes here. As you can see, I have the toggle button here, data-toggle-collapse, data-target and the ID that was targeted to the target menu, and then set up the class collapse and navbar dash toggleable dash xs for extra small size for extra small viewports for the navbar responsive here we target the nav dash content id so we will set it up here the rest of it appears exactly what we discussed a while ago i will also be placing some custom styles for our navbar to make it look more awesome 
These are just CSS fix, nothing special here. Let's take a look at our changes in our browser. Great. As you can see here, it as you can see here, our navbar is working in an and on extra small screen, our navbar appears. Next, let's work on the tooltips. As you can see here, we use data dash toggle is equals to tooltip and data dash placement is equals to top for the placement and a title for the actual content to enable our tooltip. The Bootstrap Tooltip plugin was originally based on jQuery.tipsy plugin written by Jason Frame. However, in Bootstrap 4, it moved to Tether, a third-party plugin. If you want to use this new feature, you can simply download the files on this link and include tether.js just before the bootstrap.js file. For this example, I am going to use a CDN version of tether.js file and include it here. The function that calls and triggers our tooltips remains the same. Let's check out this on our browser. Great! As you can see here, it's working fine again. Next, let's work on our table. If you're going to check our table here, we use the class table dash condense to make our table more compact by cutting cell padding in half. However, in Bootstrap 4, it was renamed to table dash sm for consistency. Let's change that now. Great, as you can see here, we have a nice condensed layout here. For our carousel, as you can see here, it, it's a mess. This is because the class item was renamed to carousel-item in Bootstrap 4. Let's change that now. One more thing that I want to change here is our control navigation. Since Bootstrap 4 doesn't support glyphicons anymore, we need to change our icon with icon-prev and icon-next class. Let's replace these codes here. Let me also delete the fonts folder here as we no longer need it. Okay, let's check our carousel on our browser. Nice. The carousel is back with a scene control navigation. Now let's talk about cards. Cards is a new component in Bootstrap 4. It has replaced panels, thumbnails, and wells. Since we have three thumbnails here, we're going to replace them with cards. To enable cards, add the card and card-black classes to an element. There are also some more classes that you can use inside the card class. The card-title for the read for the heading title, card-text for the text element, card-header for the header, card-footer for the footer. Now let's check these cards on our browser. Great, as you can see here, it is a great replacement for our thumbnails. <music> Forms has some few changes on its classes. The two major changes made are renaming the input-lg and input-sm classes to form-control-lg and form-control-sm, dropping the form-group class. In Bootstrap 4, they also added the new form-control-label class to vertically center labels with form-control. Since we're using input-lg class here, let's replace these codes with the new updated codes in Bootstrap 4 to vertically align them. Great, let's see this in our browser. As you can see here, our form is much better than the way it is before. Really glad you watched this tutorial. Upgrading an old site to a new version of Bootstrap can be a little bit frustrating. So I hope this tutorial helps you learn some of the potential pitfalls. It is recommended to always check out the official documentation for the updates.